With this guide, I want to show you how you can deploy your first Java-based Lambda to AWS. For the project setup, I'm using a Maven and have already prepared everything we need. So for the runtime, I've chosen Java 11. So right now AWS supports Java 8 and Java 11. The only dependency we need for our first basic Lambda is the uh, AWS Lambda Java Core dependency. And when it comes to packaging our application, we have to make sure that it's a shaded jar file. And here we can use the Maven shade plugin to create this jar file once we build our application. So let's write our first Lambda. For this, let's create a simple Java class. Let's call it simple Lambda. And when we want to deploy an AD uh, Lambda to AWS uh, using Java, we have to implement one of the uh, two available uh, request handlers from this AWS library. For this example, I am choosing the request handler interface, and this expects an input and an output type, which represents the, the data type or, or function is expecting and uh, what it is returning. So for now, let's make it a simple string here, and let's implement the method we need. So what we're going to implement here is the handle request method. It takes our input serialized as string. And also we get access to the context to get some metadata about the invocation. And what we then have to finally to do is to return our string. So besides this request handler, so if we take a look at this, this is coming from the AWS Lambda library, we are including on our Maven project. Um, there is a, a more low level request handler. So uh, with this request handler, uh, AWS will take care of serializing everything in the background. But if you don't uh, want this default serialization, for example, and want a low level access to the data coming in, you can also implement the request stream handler where you will get access to the raw input stream and output stream and can do everything you want with it. But for now, it's fine to use this um, interface. And for a first example, let's simply say we want to uppercase the incoming string. So let's say someone uh, inputs hello world in uh, lowercase, and then this lambda simply um, returns the same string as uppercase. So when it comes to deploying this uh, lambda, you can either use the AWS console and create the function for yourself. So pick the function name here, choose a runtime, configure permission and upload the jar file. Doing this uploading and function creation with the AWS console isn't that nice when it comes to automation. Hence, I'm using the serverless framework. So with the serverless framework, we have an abstraction um, above uh, multiple uh, cloud providers and can uh, define our uh, Lambda or our function uh, with a general approach. And the serverless framework will take care in the background to create the required resources on AWS. So for example, for our function, we need an S3 bucket where we'll store the jar file. We need IAM permissions and we need to create the function itself. And all of this is handled by the serverless framework. So for the serverless framework to work, you need the basic serverless.yaml file in the folder you're working in. First, specify the service name of your Lambda. Next comes the proprietary information about the cloud provider. So yeah, I'm picking AWS. But if I wanted to deploy this to, let's say, Google, I could also pick here the, the Google Cloud. Next, I have to select the runtime. And here, this has to match what AWS um, offers. So here, I'm picking Java 11. For the profile, this is important when it comes to credentials. So I've set up a local AWS profile with an access key and a, a secret to uh, deploy locally for my machine. Next comes the AWS region. Here I'm picking Frankfurt and in Germany. For the timeout, I, I've increased the default timeout, which is six seconds to 10 seconds, but our small application should be way faster in this case. And the final setting we can make, or if you want to override it, is the memory size. So here we say uh, AWS Lambda should provision at least, or should provision one gigabyte of RAM for our function execution. 
The next part uh, is important here. We have to point to the jar file we want to upload. And it's basically what our Maven um, build step will output here. And within the functions attribute, we can specify a list of functions and give them a name. So I've called it now simple lambda. And I'm pointing the handler now to our simple lambda class. So this is here the fully qualified class name of the file we wrote. And this file implements the request handler. So AWS will properly detect it and we will be able to invoke it. So now to deploy this, you first need serverless. So to install serverless, you can use npm and simply type npm install minus g for global serverless. And this will install everything you need. I've already did this, so I won't do this now. Once serverless is installed, you can check that it's running properly. With serverless versions, you get some insights. So here it's returning the version I'm using. That's fine. And if we now want to deploy everything to AWS, it's simply serverless deploy. And with, with hyphen V, we can get some uh, verbose output about deploying this to AWS. And what we will now see is that this, if you execute this for the first time, it may take some seconds because it will create all the required resources in AWS and you can follow it in here. So we'll see here um, in the background, um, the serverless framework created a CloudFormation stack, which is now going to be deployed. And the first thing we have to do is to create this S3 bucket where we'll upload the jar file to. And as you see this now, it's uploading our jar file. So uh, in this case, as we don't include that much dependency, it's also pretty small, which is nice. So we have fast deployments. One thing to note here before uh, doing this, I executed a Maven uh, clean package. So we have the jar file in here. And after this, it's still doing some resource setup. So it creates some um, AIM role. And once it's finished, it should uh, output that it could successfully create the Lambda in AWS and print out some information. So now this uh, worked. And if we switch now to AWS and if I click refresh here, I'm now seeing that I have my Lambda function here deployed by serverless. And if we take a look at it, so we see the runtime was successfully configured. We have the correct handler. Our zip file was uploaded in the background more information here, our memory and timeout configuration. So this uh, looks good. And we now have a Lambda running in AWS. So we can now use serverless to invoke our function. This is done by serverless invoke hyphen F and now specify the name of the Lambda, which is in our case, what we specified here. So here you could also specify multiple Lambda functions. For now, we just have this one. And with a hyphen D, we can now pass in some data we want to pass to our function execution. And if I now hit enter, I should now, or we should now see here that we get now uh, our uppercase version of our string. Another useful feature of this invoke here is if you pass hyphen L for logs, you will see the execution. So if there are any issues while invoking your function, you would see them here. And also we can see how long it took for AWS to execute our function. So here it's uh, one milliseconds, which is quite fast. If you have a big, bigger project with some setup, for example, the, the first cold start might be slow, but subsequent calls um, are then uh, way faster. So you can also use the AWS console to test your Lambda. So you don't need uh, serverless. If you go to the console and click here on the top on test, then you can specify a input, which you want to pass to your Lambda execution. So let's say here, hello world from AWS console, give it a name, let's call it plain text. And then hit create, and then we can select it here and enter test, and we'll execute our function and output our result here, which you can see is now Hello World from AWS console. So let's enhance our example a little bit. Um, let's define an environment variable. 
So with uh, serverless, we can define any environment variable here, and this will be passed to our AWS uh, Lambda. So let's say here, there's an environment variable message and it's like Duke 42. And within our Lambda, let's uh, request this string. So for this use system.getenv, say I want the message. And as a result, we will simply take the input and concatenate it with our message to show you a simple example. If you now want to deploy this, make sure we first create a new jar file. Once we created a new jar file, we can now deploy this. So if you just want to deploy one serverless function and not the whole project, you can use serverless deploy hyphen F. And this will then uh, only deploy changes uh, to this specific lumber, lambda and will be a little bit faster than the other deploy. If we execute this now, you should see the deployment uh, is really fast as our jar file is pretty lean. And if we now invoke our function again, so you've seen here I'm fused SLS. So this is a, a available abbreviation for serverless. So you don't have to type serverless over and over but can also only type SLS and then invoke hyphen F, simple lambda, hyphen D, let's say change, hyphen L, hit enter. And we will now see here the result. So our input concatenated with this environment variable we configured here. And you will see now the execution, the first execution here was a little bit slower. If we execute it again, the Lambda will be now uh, already running. So it's uh, now way faster and our result uh, matches what we specified here. You should be now able to, to use this as a template to deploy your Java-based um, AWS Lambda functions using serverless.